open. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll just be browsing. <laughs> I'll be sure to let one of us know if you need any help, okay? Sure. And then everything will be fine up until I actually did need help. Yeah, just tilt your head a little bit. Excuse me. Yeah, that's good. Um, but I would like a little bit. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but hold on. Can I help you? Uh, sorry to interrupt, but do you have this in a different shade? No, everything we have out is what we have in stock, okay? I'm not even there. Okay, thanks. But don't worry, guys, if you think a makeup artist is talking about you, it turns out they probably are. And after working in a makeup shop, unfortunately, I can confirm that. Get this. So for a couple years now, I have been working seasonally retail. Stay with me. So during the Christmas season, this guy comes in. And I was like, hello, sir, welcome in. Is there anything I could help you with today? And he goes, can I have your number? And into that, I was like, and he was like, oh, you're married. And I was like, no, sir, actually, I'm engaged. I'm not engaged. I wear this ring out so that if somebody hits on me, I just can be nice and just be like, sorry. I know it's terrible, sorry, whatever, moving on. So he was like, oh, it's too bad you're engaged because I'd love to take you out. And I was like, yeah, anyway, how can I help you? And this man goes, I'm actually looking for a necklace for my girlfriend. His girlfriend. Then he asks where the $50 and under section is. I was working at a jewelry store, a nice jewelry store. I said, unfortunately, there's only a few items in that price range. Showed it to him. He said, thanks. Winks at me and walks out the door. Somebody come get your man. Story time. So there's this one road in my town that everyone knows not to speed on because half the time there's usually a cop down at the bottom of the hill. Well, I live right off of this street and drive it every single day. Well, back in August when I was moving, I wasn't paying attention to how fast I was going, didn't see the cop at the bottom of the hill, and ended up getting pulled over. You know, the usual happened. He came up to the window and was like, Ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? And I was like, yes, yes I do, because I'm a speed racer who doesn't know how to slow their ass down. He ends up letting me off with a warning, and I go on my merry little way. Well, just now I was driving home from school, not paying attention to how fast I was going, and not paying attention to see if there was a cop at the bottom of the hill. My fast ass was going 60. So the same thing happens, takes my license and my registration. He comes back to the window and informs me he's the one that pulled me over back in August. He ends up giving me a warning and tells me not to go 60 and a 40 ever again. There's no moral to the story besides I need to be aware and slow my ass down. Story time. So last night I went to the movies and dinner with the boy last night, right? So I FaceTime him and I was like, are you ready? He said, yeah, but I have to tell you something. I'll tell you when you get here. I was like, not again. I pull up, he gets in. He was like, you won't believe me, but I don't have my wallet with me. And I was like, being a nice person that I am, I was like, it's cool. It's cool. I don't care. It's fine. So we get to the movies, right? We walk in or whatever. We get our tickets or whatever. You know, since I'm a Regal Platinum card member or whatever, I get like certain shit. So here he comes ordering all this stuff. Oh, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have this? And I'm looking at him like, you realize it's coming out of my account, right? So I just let him do him. I just kept my little smiley face on like this. Just let him do him. Just total came up to $43. So a thing just happened. Mom and I got some pizza from a pizza place that makes pizza. And uh, it was busy in there, so she placed the order and left, and she placed the order under Christina. Christina is my mom's name. So she's like, there's this shop that I want to check out. Uh, I'm leaving you in charge of picking up the pizza. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick up the pizza. So this individual behind the counter calls out for Christina, and I pick up the pizza, as one does. And they hand me the pizza, and they're like, what's your preferred name? And I'm like, uh, Jake. And they're like, oh, okay, I'm so sorry to do that to you. This individual thinks that I am the Christina, and I am a transgender individual whose mother dead named them at the pizza place. So they like, in that sort of, aw, oh, voice go like, have a good day, Jake. And I am mortified beyond belief by this encounter. Okay, so story time. Now I have two brothers, one older, one younger. And when I was growing up, my older brother was a bit of a terror. He had this thing of walking over to me and farting on me. He would then run away giggling like a young boy would. But then one day, around about five or six, I eventually snapped. I can't take this anymore, Jeremy! I will no longer stand for your poo mist in and around my nostrils! So I devised a cunning plan. 
One day for dessert, my mother had given me a chocolate pudding. And that's when the plan came together. My brother was off building something with Lego. So I placed two fingers into the pudding and scooped some up. I then ran over to where he was playing, bent over while flicking the chocolate pudding through my leg and making a large trump noise. <laughs> Hitting him in the side of the face and the back of his head. <laughs> oh, what's that? He sees the brown colouring, presumes it's poo, and then is violently sick all over his Lego. He probably still thinks it was poo. <laughs> So I have this neighbor who I've never spoken one word to at all. Uh, every time I drive by in my car or when I had only a bicycle, I would ride by and we would just wave towards each other. That's it. That was our whole communication. And today I decided to go get some coffee from the gas station and everything. And I drive by and I see his garage doors open. We wave at each other and I go get my cup of coffee. And then I also get him a cup of coffee so I can finally meet this guy who I've just been waving to for the past like year and a half. I pull into his driveway and this older gentleman, this old man, got up, smile on his face and I gave him a cup of coffee and his daughter walks out and she tells me that he actually has autism and his favorite part of the day is when I go to work or I come home from work and we wave at each other. That is his favorite part of the day. That hit me right in the heart. That made me feel so good. So just by a simple act of waving, I made somebody's day. Be kind to one another. Story time. So this morning, my son gets to take a uh, board game with him to school, right? And so he goes and he looks in the closet. He picks out Jumanji because we have the board game Jumanji. He goes and puts it in his backpack and he goes and gets ready for school. Well, I go and grip my phone and I pull up a 15 minute long sound effect that sounds like this. And I turn it down so that it's just quieter than regular conversation level, and I put it underneath a kitchen chair. He comes back in and takes his backpack. He can't hear it because, you know, the dogs are in there walking around and stuff, and my wife is in there. And he sets it down in the chair right next to where I put that sound effect. And after a few minutes, he's like, I don't think that's the fridge, because he thought that it was the fridge making that sound, right? So then he bends down, and he's listening at his backpack. And I was like, wait a minute. Didn't you put Jumanji in his backpack? The look on his face, like... And then he starts pulling it out and opens it up and looks and, and he's like, it's not coming from here. And so I grab the phone and pull it out. And he's like, dad, thought you'd enjoy. A young man in the army was constantly being made fun of because he believed in God. And one day the captain wanted to make fun of him in front of everybody. So he called the young man over and said, young man, come here, take the key and go park the Jeep in front. The young man replied, I cannot drive. The captain said, well, then ask for assistance of your God. Show us that he exists. The young man takes the key and walks to the vehicle and begins to pray. He parks the Jeep at the place perfectly well as the captain wanted. The young man came out of the Jeep and saw them all crying. They all said together, we want to serve your God. The young soldier was astonished and asked what was going on. The captain crying opened the hood of the Jeep by showing the young man that the car had no engine. Then the boy said, see, this is the God I serve, the God of the impossible, the God who gives life to what does not exist. So if you believe in miracles, share this story. So I'm at Burger King, right? <laughs> and I'm in the drive-thru and I see this guy going up to car windows asking if they have any money. And I'm like, oh dang, I don't have any cash on me, but let me see if he wants something to eat. I roll down my window and I call him over and I'm like, hey, I don't have any cash, I'm so sorry, but do you want something to eat? And he's like, oh my god, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, what would you like? He's like, I'll have a Whopper. And I'm like, okay, anything else? And he's like, yeah, I'll have a Sprite. And I'm like, okay, yum, anything else? <laughs> and he looks at me and stands back like this. Let me show you. 